against Tyrone Crowley. Of course, they're both unbeaten. That's uh, the only kind of record you're going to be reading about here when the fights begin. There is Gene Hatcher, 14-0, a junior welterweight, 140-pound limit. He is from Fort Worth, Texas, 12 knockouts, a very busy, hard-punching body puncher. And Hatcher's opponent today is Tyrone Crowley, who is a very slick, very quick, the kind of a guy who can move well on his feet, and he can hit you from both sides. He'll switch from southpaw and back to orthodox, and he's unbeaten in nine. Let's take a look at the style of Tyrone Crowley in his most recent outing against the veteran uh, Jerome Artis. Well, let's start with Gene Hatcher first. Hatcher, a close-up look of this determined young man who had an outstanding amateur career. Every fighter on our card today was a brilliant amateur fighter. Here he is against uh, Jerome Artis in his last outing and stopping the veteran with a knockout and uh, talking about his opponent today, Tyrone Crowley. I know this fighter is, uh, is a pretty fair boxer. He's a, he likes to move and he sticks his jab and he's real quick with his hands. So I've, I've faced opponents like this and, the, and my main strategy on a opponent like this is just get on top of him and stay, stay right there against his chest and work his body to the head. He's a comer and I'm a boxer. And, um, and I'm in tip-top shape. I never see a, a comer beating a box. Here is Crowley against Ernest Bing in a recent victory for Crowley as he remains unbeaten at 9-0. He's an interesting young man. Indeed, he's trying to juggle two interests in his life right now, boxing and a college career in criminal justice. Well, since I'm not in school this semester, I feel boxing is number one right now. But it's, it's a very close race. It's a, 90, a 100 to 99 and a half. School is second at this time since so I'm not in school. But like I said, um, I'm going to take boxing. I'm going to let boxing take me as far as I can go. And if not, I go back to school. I have something to rely on. Well, these are two fine young men, an interesting and personable young men. Gil Clancy and Sugar Ray Leonard are with us to uh, help describe the action of the upcoming fight. Hatcher and Crawley. Well, Hatcher is number nine ranked in the world. He's the highest ranked fighter on the card today. He is indeed a world-class fighter. How do you describe him, Gil? Well, Tim, he's a pressure fighter. He's the guy that knows how to cut off a ring, knows how to trap a guy and make the guy fight. Very, very tough guy and a good body puncher. And again, that great amateur background, it's, it's got to be an asset. Well, it is an asset, Tim. He has that foundation. Now, today, he's got some problem on his hands. Tyrone Crowley's probably one of the fastest lightweights in the world. But you have to remember, the ring is square. It isn't round. It has corners. That's where Hatch is going to do his work. Ray Leonard, you know about uh, corners in the ring, and uh, you were pretty quick on your feet, still are. What about Tyrone Crowley? How would you describe him, and how does he stay out of those corners? Well, Tyrone Crawley, first of all, he's a very uh, stylish fighter. He's cocky and uh, very fast hands. I think that's a major asset. Uh, in with a guy like Hatcher, he has to be a good boxer, he has to think, and stay out of corners. Crawley will switch uh, right to left. Uh, is that something that has ever bothered you when you've had fighters try that on you? Well, when a guy is able to switch uh, from right to, un to unorthodox, sometimes it throws you off. Uh, it depends on how well he can move and how well he can punch with both hands. All right, well, Crawley's going to have that kind of a weapon against Gene Hatcher. We'll be trying to cut him off in those corners. Should be another action fight, and it's coming up here shortly on CBS Sports Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for 10 rounds, and it's in a lightweight division. And featuring, once again, two undefeated fighters. The judges, once again, Eva Shane and Charles Spina. Counting for the knockdown seconds, alternate referee Joe Cortez. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round lightweight bout, referee Larry Hazard. And now, boxing fans, introducing the principals. First in the red corner, wearing the all black trunks with a slight red trim, he is weighing in at 137 and one quarter pounds. This gentleman is undefeated in nine professional bouts with two knockouts. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, ladies and gentlemen, here is Tyrone Butterfly Crawley. Crawley. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with the white trim, he is weighing in at 138 and one quarter pounds. This young man is undefeated in 14 professional bouts with 12 knockouts. All the way from Fort Worth, Texas, Boxing fans, here is Gene Mad Dog Hatcher. Hatcher. Gene Hatcher and Tyrone Crowley, they were introduced as lightweights. Indeed, they're uh, five pounds above that at the 140-pound limit. Here is referee Larry Hazard with his instructions. pushing. When I give a command to break, 
I want a clean break. In case of a knockdown, fighter's corner knockdown, go to the father's neutral corner. Remain in that corner until I tell you to come out. Fighter going down, you must take a mandatory eight count. The three knockdown ruling has been waived, and the bell cannot save either of you if you go down toward the end of a round. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, shake hands. Now come out fighting at the bell. Scoring in the state of New Jersey on the round system with the supplemental five-point system in case of a draw. There is the tail of the tape. They are each 23 years of age. Crawley taller with a slight reach advantage. Weighed in at 137 and a quarter. Hatcher at 138 and a quarter. A 140-pound limit for the junior welterweight. Hatcher in blue. Crawley in the black trunks. And uh, the black trunks almost reach his knees. Does that help you any, Ray, uh, those long trunks? Well, I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> Tim, here's a surprise. We mentioned that Crawley switches sometimes to Southport. In fact, he's starting this South, this fight boxing as a Southport. That could throw Gene Hatcher off, but I think only for a little while. Gene Hatcher is such a great puncher. In fact, he has, I think he has more experience than all the unbeatables because he's been in with some veterans like Escalera and uh, Jerome Artis. I think the Jerome Artis fight is going to help Gene Hatcher in this fight because he has a similar style to uh, Tyrone Crawley. He's a very, very good boxer, very smart, and you have to trap him, catch him, and make him fight. Go ahead. Let him go. Again, talking about their amateur backgrounds, Hatcher with 160 amateur fights. He was a bronze medalist in the 1980 Olympic trials. As a welterweight, he lost to Davey Moore, now a champion of the world. And in the 1980 National AAU, he was the champion, Gene Hatcher, 1980 National AAU champ. And Crawley, on the other hand, had 72 or 62, pardon me, amateur fights and was the 1978 All-Army champion and uh, scored a win over Johnny Bumpus as an amateur in 1978. He's been a professional since 81. So again, like all the other fighters on the card, outstanding amateur. Well, Tim, I don't like to talk about my loss, but uh, that should be Jerome Otis, who was the first guy that defeated me in the amateur. <laughs> well, and he reminded you of that yesterday, I noticed, <laughs> that he had a win over Otis. Crowley. With his back to us on the ropes, Hatcher trying to keep him there. That's Hatcher's style to get them in the corners and bang away. Crawley the mover. A little different style than Collins and Wick, two youngsters we just saw a few minutes ago here on CBS Sports Sunday. Crawley has great lateral movement. Now he's back boxing into Southwark, again. He's switching back and forth. Again, that could prove confusing. But I don't think a guy like Gene Hatch is going to be bothered that much. He punches at whatever's in front of him. You notice, Gil, that sometimes uh, Crawley keeps his hands down low. And that's uh, the D Detroit fighters, uh, the way they, they go, go about fighting. But a lot of times they try to lure a guy in and set him up. I don't think Crawley should be doing it because he, he's not going for his uh, punching ability. Well, he's really, I don't know what, he's only been in there two minutes, Ray, and he showed us three different styles already. He's been southpaw, orthodox, and then again fighting with his, with his arms down. I think he should just concentrate on throwing punches a little bit. See, there he is, the arms down again. Under 30 seconds to go in round number you know, one. When I, ever I had a guy fight a guy with his arm held down like that, I used to make my guy throw right hands right at his arm. Either you'd hit him in the arm, or if he got the arm out of the way, you'd hit him in the body. And then you could come back with another punch. Was that legal? Break! Step back! Step back! <laughs> was that legal? Yeah, he did that. Don Rennie was legal. <laughs> Would I do anything illegal, Ray? No. End of round one. Ah! Tyrone Crowley on the left of your screen in black. Gene Hatcher in the blue trunk, now in the foreground. Junior welterweights, unbeaten coming in. Hatcher 14 and 0, Crowley 9 and 0. And uh, Tyrone's father is a policeman in Philadelphia, and that's influenced his choice of a major in college. He's at Temple, a student in criminal justice, taking this semester off, but he is a junior and says he's going to finish. He's going to see how this boxing career goes, and uh, he expects to go back to school. Get his degree, and uh, depending on what happens for him in professional boxing, he intends to be a policeman, ultimately. Perhaps a detective. His mother Dorothy and brother Derek are here watching him. Very bright, as you can imagine, uh, intelligent, and a very delightful person. We had a chance to chat with him yesterday. Gene Hatcher, his father is a master electrician. He has worked for his manager, Dave Gorman, down in Fort Worth. He's married. His wife, Lori, is here. He has a young son, Justin, Stop pushing. two and a half. Good exchange there, Crawley landing to the body. Tim, you know Crawley is not the typical Philadelphia fighter. Most of these guys in the Philadelphia gym, they're all macho. You have to be the champion of the gym, otherwise you're not respected on your block. But he really is an intelligent fighter. He moves side to side, flip punches, 
Not a typical Philadelphia fighter, but a good fighter. For all that, he's versatile. He's able to change the style. If one thing is not effective, he tries something else. Uh, Hatcher, on the other hand, is a very rough inside fighter. He's very slow on his feet, but once he's inside, he's able to do damage. Well, I'm sure he's faced other fighters with, with this kind of a style, and he's made managed to solve them. You know, all those amateur fights, you've got to fight all kinds of styles, Ray, and it's very, very good experience for him having all those amateur fights. He's a tough guy. You know, it's the way the hatches work that body of Crawley, and this is taking his toe. Because that body, those body shots, especially if they get through, they really wear the opponent down. And he's punching excellently to the body now. He has Crawley where he wants him, trying to keep him in the corner. Crawley's plan to stick and move and stay away from Hatch. But That's Hatcher good. so far has had the advantage. That's where we mentioned that Hatcher would be doing his work in those corners. Like, that's the reason that they make that ring square instead of round. Otherwise, you could have some real dull Watch fights. Your head. Watch exactly. Your head. And I was saying, Gil, earlier that uh, Crawley needs to stay out of the corners because this is uh, Hatch's fight against the ropes and the corners. Under 30 seconds to go, round number two. Hatch in blue, Crawley in black, both unbeaten. 140 pounds. Best wins over Jerome Artis and the former champion of the world, Alfredo Escalera, during his comeback bid. Crawley, victories over Ernest Bing and Al Carter, a pair of experienced veterans. Oh, good solid body shot by Hatcher, scoring again. Final second. Round three from the Claridge Hotel in Atlantic City. Tyrone Crawley in black. Gene Hatcher in the blue trunks with white trim. Ten round, junior welterweight, bout Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Bray Leonard here at ringside. Gene Hatcher, ranked number nine in the world, 14-0. And uh, having himself a tough opponent here with Tyrone Crawley unbeaten in nine for about Slippery, slick, and quick. Well, Crawley's doing the right thing. He's being cute, and uh, I believe he can frustrate Gene Hatcher. But he still has to be very careful. Ray, Hatcher isn't the kind of a guy that gets easily discouraged or frustrated. He's one of these kind of very, he punches at whatever's in front of him. I had a fighter like that uh, many years ago by the name of Ralph Tiger Jones. Beat five world champions. And he was able to beat these cuties all the time because he didn't let anything bother him. Kept to his game plan, just kept whacking away to the body, and eventually he hit gets him. Well, okay, you know, I just need a lot of satisfied. Make him lose his composure, upset him, and frustrate him. Good exchange by both fighters out in the middle of the ring. That's where Crawley wants to be, and Hatcher would rather have him back pinned against the ropes. Hatcher had some interesting comments about pro boxing. He said that despite the success he had as an amateur, winning bronze medal in the 80 Olympic trials, that, uh, he wasn't going to turn pro, but then decided that uh, the officiating, judging, and rules of boxing had improved to the point where they were protecting fighters. And he saw all that money out there, and he said, well, maybe I'll give it a try. He's not planned to turn pro, but here he is, 14-0 with 12 knockouts. Tim, these are two very, very good professional fighters. Last week we saw Robinson and Armstrong, two very, very good lightweights. Now these are two very, very good, skilled junior welterweights. I think these, kind, these kids can fight just about anybody in the world right now. I would say because they had the twos, and they are you know, real good uh, fighters, and... Uh, they in great shape. And a minute to go, round three, scheduled for 10. If you join us late, you might have missed battling Billy Collins, who flattened Ricky Whip, well, stopped him on a TKO in the fourth round in a real war between two tough young men, and Collins is just too tough for this afternoon. Later today, you'll see James Broad and Donnie Long, a pair of big, and I mean big, heavyweights. We'll also be seeing some action from the Robin Blake bout. Robin Blake and Primo Ramos. 15 seconds remaining, round three. Hatcher in blue, Crawley in black. Crawley is a thinking man's fighter. Watch your head. Take a punch, too. We've seen that so far. Round number four, and Crawley comes out showboating a little bit. He's a very confident young man. Awful lot of poise. And if Hatcher has uh, punished him at all to the body, uh, Crawley is not about to show it. He loves to train, Ray. He said he uh, particularly uh, enjoys running. In fact, uh, he's run marathon distances. And 
We can see his conditioning in this fight is outstanding. Well, that's when it pays off, Kim. That, uh, working out in the gym every day, it pays off, especially in the late rounds. He's a very talented kid. Anybody that can box uh, equally well from the southpaw style and from the orthodox style has got to have good balance and good talent. Good combination. He'd be the same as the guy in baseball that can switch hit. That's when he decided to play. He does just as well either way. Especially to the body in that exchange in the middle of the ring and probably came back with combinations to the head. About an equal exchange. I'd like to alert our stations along the line. We'll be going to a 30-second station break at the end of this fourth round. Tim Ryan, Sugar Ray Leonard, Joe Clancy, ringside, live on CBS Sports Sunday. Next week, Donald Curry and Marlon Starling, unbeaten welterweight. And that should be a dandy. You notice what Paul is doing now? He was peppering uh, Hatch with that, that jab. He can do it all day. But when he stops punching, Hatcher comes in strong and works the body. Hey, Hatcher, Hatcher is not a pretty looking fighter to look at. He's not flashy or anything, but he's very, very effective. He's like a, he's like a blue collar worker. Especially in the body. He works that body very well. He goes to the body hard. Oh, solid right hand back up Crawley. Best punch of the fight by Gene Hatcher. <laughs> Under a minute to go. Hatcher just relentless. And sometimes being cute, especially when you're hurt, it gets you by. Because a lot of times I've been hurt in the ring and I've faked or I got real cute and fancy until my head cleared. Sometimes it doesn't work either. <laughs> Worth trying, though. Is that the idea? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, it worked, it worked for you pretty well, Ray. <laughs> Under 30 seconds to go. In round number four, probably been 12 rounds uh, once in his career, indeed his last fight, a decision over Al Carter winning the ESPN title. And Hatcher's been 10 rounds once. Coming to the end of round number four. And we will be back with more boxing action from Atlantic City after this word from your local station. Let's take a look at the best punch of the fight. So far, Gene Hatcher, watch a right hand will come out here in this next exchange. And right there, back up Tyrone Crowley. And fortunately for Tyrone Ray, it looked like he was stepping back just as the punch arrived, so he reduced uh, the impact of it somewhat. Otherwise, he might have been on the canvas. Well, he took away the power of the punch by moving back. So this is round number five. I like the way Crawley reacted when he got hit. He didn't get he didn't get panicky at all, Tim. He just went right back to work. He's a real cute fighter. Very, very good. The kid with nine fights has got all the poise in the world. What pays off also is the fact that Crawley has such great hand speed. He's able to get away with a lot of things that the average fighter couldn't get away with. Like switching up. Um, he's able, like, oh, he just came back with an overhand right. Good right Play. hand. Good hand speed. Now, now when he has that, he has that left hand at his side, but he's using his shoulder to protect his chin. He, he's giving us another new look now. Well, he said he learned how to fight on the streets in Philly. Said he had to where I came from. And then he polished it up real in the army and did very well there in all army champion in 1978. Oh, good right uppercut by Crawley. Back up. Crawley may not have that big punch, but he sure is very durable, very tough. You know, he, his record uh, shows that he doesn't have too much uh, punching power. He's only scored two knockouts in his career, but he does throw his punches correctly, and he's a well-built guy. I'm surprised he doesn't get a little more power in those punches. What's the reason, Ray? Well, I think he needs more leverage because he's so concerned about hitting and getting out. He's not uh, there long enough to put enough power behind his punches. Again, we'd like to alert our station on, along the line that we'll be going to a 33-second station break at the end of this round. I bet you've got something that'll fit into 33 seconds for all the folks along the line. Also, yeah, I think he turn, his, turn that glove over more instead of slapping with it. Yes, a lot of times, Ray, uh, he does punch with an open glove. I'm surprised he hasn't warned him once or twice already. 
referee is Larry Hazard, scoring on the round system here in New Jersey. Yeah, we have another new look from, uh, <laughs> from Crawley. That's five. Judges are Charles Spina and Eva Shane. So along with the referee, Larry Hazard will score the fight. Hatcher's in his office when he's standing right there in front of Crawley with Crawley having his back to the ropes. Crawley likes to work out here where he is now. Hatcher's been successful uh, to the body of Tyrone Crawley, but only once to the head with an overhand right. But so far, he's just been doing damage to the body. The 22nd mark in round five. Good combination scored by Crawley. He seemed to hurt Hatcher at all, but he certainly earned some points with that exchange. Punch on out. We'll be back with more boxing after this word from your local station. Crawley is managed by Brent Malavinsky and trained by Gilbert Ware and Billy Hayward. They're working in his corner right now. You saw his amateur record. Uh, outstanding. All of the other boxers on the card today. So that's why, despite these... Uh, records that uh, don't indicate a great deal of professional experience uh, is why these fighters are showing so much class and style. They have had plenty of experience as amateurs. After 14 and 0 as a pro, Crawley 9 and 0. You know, uh, Crawley has been showing Hatch all these different styles. He switches to south floor, he drops his hands, he puts his hands up, he does everything different, he moves his head. The only thing that doesn't move on a fighter is his body. If I was in Hatch's corner, I would say, don't worry about which way this guy's standing, which way he's standing, just drive those body shots in there. You'll start those combinations going that way. Hey, did you ever have to, to deal with an opponent like that because it was always you who was the mover and the, and the guy who, who had the hand speed and the foot speed. Do you remember fights in your career where all of a sudden you were trying to, to get to the body of a guy who was giving you a lot of action? The only guy I can remember, and again, it was in the amateur, my amateur career with uh, Ron Modest, who was a very mobile fighter, always on the move, uh, very elusive, very difficult to hit. And I work his body because, like Gil said, the body doesn't move. The head moves, the body stays there. Solid body punching from Hatcher in that exchange. <laughs> have to be impressed with the poise of 23-year-old Tyrone Crawley. He just exudes confidence out there. As does Hatcher. Hatcher is also only 23. He does appear to be older. He looks like more of the veteran fighter. If I was in Hatcher's corner, I would have struck him to stay closer and to smoke the punches of Tyrone Crawley, not to give him uh, room to punch. Crawley just landed a couple from long range and two more. Good point, Ray. Crawley's going well here in the middle of the ring. Crawley's doing whatever he wants to do. Best round for Crawley so far. Now finally, Hatcher forces him to the rope. They were all very, very showy punches, but not too much power. Now the blue collar work is coming back. It's his turn. See, is trying to rough up for it. A minute to go, round six. Fighters like Carl, you have to rough up. You have to turn to a seat fighter. Really stay on top of him and punch. Every time you get an opportunity, stay inside and punch. Not let up. All the moves that Crawley's showing, showing me, he looks like he's been fighting for about 30 years. He can do it all in there. He has very good balance. I'm impressed, Gil, with the way that Crawley is able to punch at any uh, angle. He's thrown pretty much every uh, punch in the book. He's so cool. He looks... Looks like he wrote the book. Ten seconds left in round number six. The artistry of Crawley against the determination of Hatcher. What we see is a very close fight. Round number seven. Tyrone Crawley in the black trunks. Gene Hatcher in the blue. And again, this fight has been what we expected, as was Collins and Witt. Collins and Witt toe to toe warfare. What we expected, we got. It ended in four with Collins, a TKO winner over Ricky Witt. This time we have the classic uh, matchup, as the cliche goes, between the boxer and the hardworking puncher. Neither fighter uh, with a great deal of knockout power, although Hatcher stopped 12 of his 14 opponents. He's not a big punch thrower. Crawley, of course, is the artist in there, and he's showing us 
his artistry here today against Hatcher, but it's a very close fight after six. The ball is making it very difficult for Hatcher because you notice the way now he's able to utilize the whole ring. Side to side, lateral movement, and maintains his balance. Has very long arms. He's able to punch like there from both angles. Gene Hatcher, stable mate Donald Curry will be on our card next Saturday on CBS Sports Saturday against Marlon Starling. Two undefeated welterweights hoping to uh, get that crown that still sits very nicely on the head of our Sugar Ray Leonard. Hatcher oh. landed some good body punches, Tim, but I've noticed now he'll throw two punches and stop. He's going to have to put more pressure on Crawley. He really has to throw punches, not two. He's got to throw eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve if necessary. Well, see, Hatcher's trying to load up one big punch. And with a guy that possesses hand speed like Tyrone Crawley, it's very difficult to do. Because they'll hit you four or five times to get two. I've always found that one big punch comes all by itself. When you start to think about it, you never land it. It's a natural punch. Sometimes fighters, young fighters, look for a knockout. A knockout just happens. Under a minute to go. Round number seven. Ten round junior all the way foul. Weight limit 140 pounds. <laughs> Notice Hatcher stopped punching again. Threw two punches. Crawley's back was on the ropes, and he stopped the weight for the return from Crawley. He can't do that. Just a solid punching. right to the body. In the meantime, he gives uh, Crawley a chance to uh, change up his back. Work out. And he will change. Five seconds left in round seven. One no wonders if Hatcher's getting a little discouraged. He's landed a lot of body blows to the midsection of Crawley. Hasn't slowed him down at all. Coming to the end of round number seven. Hatcher digging to the body once more. All right, hold it, hold it. Step back, step back. Round number eight, Gene Hatcher from Fort Worth, Texas, and Duke. Tyrone Crowley from Philadelphia and Black, a criminology student at Temple University. Hatcher, an electrician who works for his manager, Dave Gorman. Gorman with Donald Curry, Robin Blake, Carol Petty, and Hatcher and his stable, all very promising young professionals. In a, in a fight like this, you're liable to get a wide difference of opinion in the judges' scoring because there's the exact opposite. One fighter is a, a beautiful boxer, and the other guy's a pressure fighter. And again, some judges like the guy that's coming forward all the time, and other judges like fighters that show a lot of class and movement. So you're liable to get completely different opinions when the scoring of the fight takes place. Good point. Uh, it will be a difficult fight to score because they've done, both done their own thing very well in the fight. Neither fighter has been able to dominate the other. Referee Larry Hazard and judges Charles Spina and Eva Shane will do the scoring in the round system. As we have it, it's a, a very close fight through seven rounds. A lot of times the judges don't particularly care for all that showboat. The fact that we're going to see aggressive boxing, good clean boxing. Ray Leonard, Gil Clancy, and Tim Ryan live on CBS Sports Sunday from Claire Jostel in Atlantic City. And this is the second bout we've seen so far this afternoon on our unbeatable afternoon of boxing. And we've had uh, one beaten fighter. I prefer to see Tyrone Crawl on the outside, Tim. He looks really good, scoring punches. I mean, he, he keeps his balance, and he, he's, he gets hit less. That's it. He has discouraged uh, Hatcher. Hatcher is not showing the fire that he showed earlier in the fight. He seems to be a little sluggish right now in, at this moment in the fight. Under a minute to go. Threw that punch with no conviction whatsoever and missed by a foot. From the early going, uh, Hatcher landed an awful lot of body punches. And uh, here's Crawley looking fresh. Still dancing and moving. Got to be discouraging. What, what also discourages the fighters, especially when he throws a punch and knowing for the way he's going to get hit by another punch. Coming down to 20 seconds left in round number eight. 
Kevin Clark has been moving and punching All right, hold it. Break. for the past seven rounds. He's in great shape. Hasn't, ta hasn't taken a deep breath. Come on, come on. Here's a case where Hatcher should really flop it, but he's Round number nine of a very well fought junior welterweight bout. Tyrone Crawley in black, Gene Hatcher in blue. And as we look at our obviously unofficial scorecard, uh, Hatcher, as we saw, it, had the early lead working to the body and scoring consistently. Crawley dancing and moving and being less effective. But since round five, it would appear to us at least that Crawley's been taking the fight away from Hatcher. Hatcher is and slowing down, not throwing as many punches. However, as uh, Gill has pointed out, it's a difficult fight to score because of the styles, and the judges may uh, see it totally differently than we do. Well, the fourth round, that's when Crawley starts taking uh, control. He's making uh, Hatcher fight this fight, and Hatcher's chasing him. In fact, he should be cutting the ring off. He's following Tyrone. He needs to cut the ring off. Now there's a good example right there. As, as Crawley just made one little spin and kept himself out of the corner, Hatcher failing to cut him off. If I was in Crawley's corner, knowing the judges like different styles of fighters, I would say, all right, Tyrone, when this guy misses and you have him a little off balance, really go in there and throw, throw eight or nine punches like you really mean it to take the fight over. Make sure you win the fight in the judges' eyes. These rounds are all very, very close. Crawley will throw one or two float, uh, showy punches and land them, and then Hatcher comes back with his body shots as he did just then. So it's very, very difficult. But I think Tyrone has the ability to really get in there and throw flashy combinations to catch the eyes of the, eyes of the judge. He can't fight as much defensively as he has. He, and Crawley has the tools, Gil. He can throw those kind of punches. Hatcher working hard here, but not terribly effectively. He hasn't been landing as much. He seems to be working more to the head than the body. And also, I suspect a little zip gone from Hatcher's punches. Over a minute to go in the ninth round. He can't, Hatcher can't seem to get through all his defense because he's been throwing those body shots from the very first round. I felt it would just uh, wear his man, wear Crawley down. So Crawley's in tremendous shape. Crawley just landed good body shots. Crawley landed a good right hand in that last exchange. Under 30 seconds to go now in round number nine. Hatcher's now got Crawley in the corner, and he's got to throw punches. Look at Crawley throw him, trying to fight his way out. That's what Hatcher stopped doing. He's not hustling enough when he gets Crawley. Well, one punch at a time, one or two. Never more than two. He's trying to out-muscle Crawley. Coming to the end of the ninth round. Solid left, Dave Gorman and uh, trainer Joe Barrientes will be talking to Gene Hatcher between rounds as we see Tyrone Crawley and his handlers coming in, Gilbert Ware, Billy Hayward. And uh, at this point, at this point in the fight, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a close call as we see it. The tenth round can be very important, but it seems to me that that elusive thing, momentum, has somehow shifted in, in Crawley's favor from about the middle of the fight. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. All the points. Here, old Barry Entes, the trainer, getting some air in the lungs of Hatcher. And we are underway, round number 10, the final round. Hatcher in blue, Crawley in black, a close fight, well fought. And both men following their own styles. No Barrientos in Hatcher's corner lifted him up just before the bell rang to start the 10th round. That's the only thing I could think of is that Hatcher's back is bothering him. We've seen that happen a few times. Well, Crawley's going to feel quite uh, you know, sure that he's ahead on points. So I won't be surprised if uh, Crawley got a little cuter. Well, 
Crawley's corner, they told him he just has to outpoint him, doesn't have to outslug him. But uh, I've always been a warrior in this last, last round is important. If he wants to win the fight, I think he should start to dominate it. I don't care how far I'm ahead, Gil. When I was fighting, I would, that's the last round, I would really uh, go all out for it. Now here's his chance. He could he could lead now, lead with the combination. He tried it. of how hard to score it is. Gil, uh, you gave that last round of Hatcher. I gave it to Crawley. And I don't think anybody could argue strongly for either side on it. Uh, you can see it from two different points of view, and it was a close round as each round has been. And this is the last round, so who knows? It could well decide the fight. And they are really wailing away. Well, right now, Hatch is doing most of the whaling. Now, this is when Carlos should really start throwing a lot of punches. He has that good hand speed, and he's able to do that. And he's ready to go in the fight. That's just landed his best body punches for the fight so far in this round. Some real bombs. It seems like Hatch would be a great 15-round fighter because I'm sure he would wear his man down. Right, 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 right. Go. Okay, go ahead. 30 seconds to go. Two unbeaten junior welterweight. Part of our unbeatable afternoon of boxing on CBS Sports Sunday. We're coming down to the end of this 10-round battle. Hatcher just missed with an overhand right. Looking at the finish, Tyrone Crowley and Gene Hatcher put on a, uh, an outstanding display of boxing, two contrasting styles, and some mutual respect being displayed by the fighters uh, to each other at the end. And both of them uh, perhaps thinking uh, that they have won the fight, and perhaps with cause. It'll be an interesting decision, and we'll be back with it right now. Let's go to... Okay, back here in Atlantic City, we're ready for the decision. Let's go to the ring announcer, Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority decision. And the scoring as follows. Judge Charles Spina scoring it 7-3. Judge Eva Shane scoring it 5-5. And referee Larry Hazard scoring it 5-4-1. And the winner, Tyrone Butterfly Crawley. Well, there it is. As we expected, a very difficult fight. A very difficult fight to judge. And let's uh, try and talk to both these young men. Gene, on over here, too. Uh, gentlemen, I've got the winner, Tyrone Crawley and Gene Hatcher, both with me. Uh, we expected that it would be a very close fight. Indeed, it turns out uh, to be a split decision. And uh, one judge had it 7-3. I, I, I can't say any of us agreed with that. Did you, uh, either one of you feel you had a, a, a clear-cut uh, victory? Let's start with the winner, Tyrone. Yes, I feel I had an edge coming down the stretch. It was a good close fight. I knew that. Coming down to the last two rounds, I knew it was fairly even. So I tried my darndest to pull it out. You know, I can't take nothing away from Gene. He was there for all 10 rounds. He took some good shots, and he was giving me some, some good shots. Gene, what was your feeling uh, at, the, at the end of the fight? Did you think you'd won it? I knew it was close, Tim. Uh, the last couple rounds, like you said, we was both trying extra hard. I was trying to keep him on the ropes. He was trying to stay away. I will say he did take me with a few jabs, which are points on the scorecards. I don't feel that none of the jabs were hurting me, but them were points, and, and that's where I've got Well, that's what he does. He doesn't, he doesn't hurt too many people, but he does pile them up. But you did your thing. You both uh, fought 
your own fights very, very well, and we had the feeling at the end of the fight it would be as close a decision as it was. A split decision victory for Tyrone Crowley. We know Gene Hatch will be back. We knew coming in two undefeateds. One of them was probably going to lose. We darn near had a draw, and I don't think anybody uh, would have been unhappy except Tyrone Crowley if they'd called it a draw. Anyway, congratulations yeah. to both of you. We look forward to seeing you both in your future ring career. All right, Tim. Thank you very much, and thanks CBS for putting me and Gene on here since the football strike, and I wish they hurry up back because I miss them. Okay, Tyrone Crowley wants the football strike to be over, too, like most of the football fans do. Right now, he is here on our unbeatable afternoon of boxing as they just introduced some of the celebrity boxers in attendance at today's fight at the Claridge. Upcoming, we have a heavyweight bout scheduled for 10 rounds between another pair of unbeatens, James Broad and Donnie Long. And James Broad, of course, uh, well known for his win over Frazier. Donnie Long, a 